Hi, everybody. Sorry, hi. Sorry for the minor delay. Um, thank you for coming. This is, um, it's, it's really nice to see everybody here. I actually thought we were programmed against Michael Palin, which I was wrong about, which is good, because I didn't think anybody would come. I'd go to Michael Palin instead. Um, but this is really nice. Thank you for coming. Um, you're in the um, Flipping the Model Social Engagement Strategy session. And um, this is sort of an emergent field that we're going to be talking about. The documentaries have always been a very vital part of social change. But only lately have we really been thinking about strategically how documentaries and social change fit together and how documentary filmmaking can be an, a, an essential part of social impacts across a number of different issues. My name is Lena Servostova, and I have with me uh, two pretty amazing social impact producers, uh, Trisha Finneran and Jennifer MacArthur. And we're gonna be talking to you about the state of the field as it is now and what we think needs to happen next to grow the field and to make it a vibrant uh, part of social impact and part of the documentary field. I'm going to read to you um, the bios of these two uh, amazing women, and then we're going to talk a little bit about definitions, okay? And then we're going to do a, pres a little presentation, each of us, about our strategy, our process, and our history and our work. And then we're going to get into the actual discussion of it. And I want you guys to interrupt. I want you to disagree. I want you to tell us your stories as well. We have enough time. And I want you to tweet about it. And the hashtag is ChefDocFest. Okay, so uh, the woman just to my left is Trisha Finneran, and her bio reads, uh, she's a strategist and producer working at the intersection of storytelling and social change. Her recent engagement campaigns include Bully, How to Survive a Plague, and The Revolutionary Optimists. Over the past two decades, she has held senior positions at Sundance Institute, American Film Institute, and Independent Film Project, New York. She continues to consult for Sundance Documentary and The Good Pitch, um, which is an innovative film and campaign development forum run by BritDoc, and I know I see some BritDoc folks here, um, and that's in partnership with Sundance. Uh, the woman at the end is Jennifer MacArthur. She is a multi-platform communications and engagement strategist with a focus on documentary. Her background spans over 15 years working in radio, film, and TV, and the web. In 2008, out of a passion for helping producers create social change, she formed Borderline Media. Projects include HBO's Gideon's Army, which is coming out this year, ITVS's social TV platform, OV, and POV's, POV's Traces of the Trade. Previously, she produced NPR Story Code, Griot, and she lives in Brooklyn. We all live in New York. I'm sorry, we, were try we, uh, we don't have any um, British social impact producers up here, but we're gonna try to fill that gap a bit. And I um, am a social innovation strategist. I'm a professor in New York, and I run a consultancy um, that looks at the intersection of creative media, technology, design, and human rights. I work with documentary. I work um, with institutions and nonprofits. And every once in a while, I work with a film as well. So we're going to start with definitions, because I think one of, the, one of the issues we have in this growing field is that we have a number of different words for the same thing, and we have a number of different trends that are emerging that all have different names. So Trisha, if you could start, can you give us a, a definition of what you think a social impact producer is? You didn't tell me you were going to ask questions. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think um, a social impact producer is um, a strategist, um, an individual, it could be a company that works in close partnership with a filmmaker, um, hopefully before the film is done, um, a film that has a social justice angle on it, and works closely with them to determine what, um, what social change the film can create, narrow um, goals around that, and work with them to help uh, Define a, define a campaign that rolls out over time using various you know, media tools um, to support social change in a particular sector. So, simple. Great. Jennifer, do you have anything to add to that or different from that? No, I don't, I, don't, I think that's, yeah, I think it's fair. I think it's fair. Mm -hmm. What about outreach and engagement? So, uh, this is a particular <laughs> yeah. bailiwick of mine. Um, I think those terms get used interchangeably, and I think they are not interchangeable. I think that, um, you know, I would call uh, outreach a tactic, and um, one piece of, of an overall engagement 
strategy. That's how I would def define it. Um, I don't think you uh, can do one or the other to have a successful um, social impact campaign. I think you have to employ both um, engagement and outreach. And I'll go into this a little bit um, in, in my remarks, but I think um, fundamentally it's, it's really about an orientation toward audiences and communities, right? I think when you're talking about engagement, you're talking about a process that includes and incorporates community and audience um, you know, ideas, right? It's participatory. You're engaging people and you're bringing them into the process. And I think outreach, um, to, to, to really look at and create solutions uh, uh, together. And I think outreach is really much more of a, you know, can be at that point before and after the, the, the process of engagement where you're taking content, you're, you're taking information and you're putting it out into the world. Right? And, and for means of educating people or um, uh, trying to bring people into a process of engagement. Right? So outreach is really a one-way thing that, that um, you know, previous to our, our kind of new digital world where we have this, this ability to actually you know, reach out and then listen and hear what people were saying, I think outreach was the model that really closely um, mirrored mass media and broadcast because it by definition is a one-way thing, right? Goes out into the community and outreach accompanies that. And I think engagement is really developed um, in concert with this new opening of, of the media space where people can create their own media, people can respond to your media, people can work with you, and you can co-produce things using digital and, and the web. Tricia? Um, I would just add that I think it's just uh, exists along a continuum of outreach is the beginning, engagement is sort of the next step. And if you, you want to reach out to as many people as possible um, and touch as many people as possible with a campaign, um, a smaller number of people are going to actually engage with your work and engage with your media in a deep way. Um, others are going to actually become actively involved and engaged in the work that you're doing and um, possibly get involved in creating actual um, social change, whether as volunteers, as donors, as protesters, or whatever. So I sort of think of it as you can't really engage people unless you've reached out to them. So it's really just along a continuum um, towards creating social change. And I know you'll touch on this in your presentations, but tell me, tell me where distribution, marketing, and outreach and engagement fit together in your view. Very tenuously. <laughs> no, um, not always perfectly. I mean, I think uh, it can be very difficult to um, it can be very difficult for filmmakers to match up um, distribution and marketing with a successful engagement and outreach strategy. But I think that um, I think ideally you want to be thinking about those things in advance of um, in advance of distribution. Right? You want to try to um, work with a filmmaker and craft something where you can create, and, and for me, in my mind, your, your distribution, again, is a tactic, right? It's not the end, it's a means to an end, and if you are thinking about how you want to have the most impact with your, with your content, you want to set up distribution that actually supports your, your engagement and your outreach as opposed to the other way around, as opposed to like trying to fit your, your engagement and your outreach into uh, uh, what your distribution deal already is, right? That, that causes, that makes it much more difficult to have a, a successful um, social change or social impact campaign. Okay. Trisha, anything to add? Um, I mean, I get more into this in my presentation. I guess what I would say is, um, for me, marketing and um, social change campaigns and engagement um, and distribution sort of market. So you're asking the difference between engagement campaigns and distribution and how they work together? Yeah, yeah so I guess I think about in order to get a film out in the world, you need um, a great marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. And that can really empower and energize um, their engagement campaign and, and vice versa. So they absolutely have to work in tandem. Um, I think they have different, they absolutely have different goals and you have to be clear about those goals and different um, financial bottom line. But it, uh, they have to work together, otherwise you're sort of wasting energy, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll get into more of the details around those those questions after this. I'd love for you to, Trisha, for you sure. to tell us a little bit more about your work with your presentation. In the meantime, while Trisha is setting up, um, I wanted to point out that right here is a, um, if all of you knew who Robert West was, 
who passed away last week. He was uh, the co-founder of Working Films, which, and he was one of the fathers, one of the gurus of, of social engagement using documentary film. And his loss is actually, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really important to note and to his contributions is important to note. We have a memorial book here that I would love for all of you to sign. Um, it's going to go to his family at the end of the festival. Um, and given that we're all interested in the field that he helped to build, um, it would be wonderful if we could send him, uh, his family, a, a note from all of us. Okay, Trisha. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna see if the next button actually works. Ah, okay. Um, so uh, I guess one thing just to start, um, I've been doing this work for a short amount of time. Um, I previously worked for Sundance and for AFI. So for me, I'm really used to working with, for institutions that serve filmmakers, and that's what I've done for the past 15, 20 years. And um, so in my work doing um, engagement strategy, for me, it's really about partnering with filmmakers, and that's sort of how I view the work that I do now. And um, I've been trying to figure out what to call what I do, and I finally came up with Story Matters, because at the end of the day, for me, um, while I'm interested in social change, it really starts with story. Um, so and this thing's just going all over the place. It has a life of its own. So, um, so think about the value of social issue documentaries. So, um, how many of you in the room are filmmakers? Great. And how many of you make sort of social justice films? Think for a moment um, of what is your film worth? What is the value of your film? Um, so some of you are here with finished films, some of you are here with films in progress, you probably have a budget for that film, and that's the cost of your film. But what I want to talk to you about, and what I want you to think about, is what's the value of your film. Um, and since we're gonna be talking about the future of, um, of social engagement strategy, I thought I'd take a quick moment, this thing has a life of its own, I swear, um, to do a admittedly brief and oversimplified history of social issue documentary. So um, in the olden days, um, public media, there's all kinds of typos in here because I redid it today, but anyway, so public media is central to any democracy. And for a long time, um, in terms of social issue documentary, public broadcasters were the way that a society expressed its support for social issue documentary. So there's public media funding from your tax dollars that supports, whether it's the BBC or PBS or whatever it is, and a television channel came into lots of people's houses, and that's how they engaged with social issue documentaries, and hopefully the, um, they created a national conversation about issues and ideas. So it was a one-way conversation, and um, film, filmmakers got most of their money from TV and film funds, and a limited number of commissioning editors got to tell you what films you could make because they had all the money. Um, now, things have changed. Um, the public broadcasting budgets went down. Um, technology democratized distribution and increased audience engagement. So you can get uh, money from a lot of different places, and you can engage with people in a lot of different ways. It sort of has this weird thing where it's going on its own, guys. Okay, um, and you can get your budget from a lot of different places, but often you're getting small amounts of money from a lot of different um, places, and it's harder actually to create your whole budget. The other thing that happened was that um, a couple years ago, social justice documentaries started to gain a lot of inf influence in the marketplace. So while you'd all been making social issue documentaries for a long time, there was a moment where it raised a lot of awareness, whether it was Michael Moore or An Inconvenient Truth. And I think when that happened, a lot of social justice organizations and nonprofits wanted to get into the documentary business, and they wanted their own Inconvenient Truth. Um, the other big thing that changed is that multi-platform became the new norm. So you no longer had to just make a film. You were expected to make more than a film. You're expected to have a website, accompanying materials, and a variety of ways to reach out to your audience. Um, so now, um, I think that, back to this notion of value, um, I think that the way, if you think about the value of your film as its power to connect with audiences, and to engage audiences, um, to generate influence, and even create social change, that's the value of your film. And the way you're going to reach audiences is by thinking about who the potential partners are and who the potential funders are that are interested in advancing social change around an issue and see a value in your, in your film to engage that agenda. Um, so 
I'm going to show you an example of a film that I worked on um, uh, that's a short film and just a couple things about it in terms of who the partners are that are kind of important. So it is a traditional feature, uh, documentary feature funded by ITVS. Um, I used to work at Sundance and we supported it through the Sundance Documentary Film Program. Um, and they also received a bunch of money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And um, the way they got that was starting with a partnership with Sundance, and then um, they found that the short form media was really, really valuable, the Gates Foundation. Um, and they used it at a TED, uh, TED Talk, which is a, you all, do you all know who TED is? Yeah. So they used it at a TED exchange, and they found it really valuable, and they kind of kept investing in following up on this film. Um, so this is actually the third film in a series um, that, again, is a feature film and it will air on independent lens. And if I press next, it will start playing? Maybe, maybe not? I don't know. And Liam is going to make it play. And I'll just keep talking. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, while we're... So here's the PowerPoint again, and it'll play? Let's try that. Do I pre press next, or is it going to play by itself? OK. Et voila. निजेबलार देखी এলাকার কোনো বাড়ি নাম্বার নেই কিংবা ব্লকও নেই তো আমরা তারপর ঠিক করলাম যে আমরাও যদি এরকম পুরো এলাকার একটা কিছু নাম্বারিং করে দিই আমাদের কাজ করতে অনেক সুবিধা হয়ে যাবে What are the things we want to add to the map? You want 100% polio, right? Yeah. But how do you do that if you don't know how many children there are? You can't, can you? So that's what we're trying to change. Okay. So you can use these phones. You can do your jobs even better. डायरेक्ट <laughs> खोज ने जेदी ने एक दादा 
গ্রুপের খুবই ভালো লাগবে কারণ গ্রুপ প্রচন্ড এটা নিয়ে কাজ করেছে So So that short film again is part of um a feature film and I just want to I I'm going to have like 2 minutes to go through sort of strategy and process of how I work on social engagement but I'm going to use this film as an example and then talk about what you just saw. Um so what I start about I start out with what's the issue area in which you're working. So you sometimes you've already made a film and think about what issue areas it fits into in terms of um in terms of particularly as it relates to funders and partners. So this film is a global health and development film. And when we thought about our audience for social change, we wanted to get to decision makers in health and development. So early early on we wanted to get to the Gates Foundation. um and we the, the filmmakers did that um and i think about articulating the goal for the campaign by um establishing what the problem is that the campaign can solve so for us the problem one of the problems we wanted to solve was that um in the development world community driven and and youth driven um development is actually on the rise and particularly really listening to communities and creating a feedback loop around communities but there aren't a lot of great models and a great stories about actually watching that happen and seeing that in action um and and youth and a sort of focus on youth is a major um new focus for example with USAID that's their new sort of big focus cuz youth will 40% of of uh, the indian population is is under 20 for example um so our strategy for doing that right so um we did a theatrical release of this film really to create energy and excitement around the film um but in terms of how we tried to achieve our goal first of all we were celebrating these young people so we actually brought Amlan and the two kids featured in the film Salim and Shika over to the United States and they spent um 3 and 1/2 weeks in the United States with us and they came to every screening and they also came to every sit down meeting so when we sat down with UNICEF about um using this film to empower their polio vaccination programs they were there when we sat down with Columbia University about using that handheld technology and building out that platform further um those two kids were there and they really sort of led um the way these programs are being developed um so that made a huge difference i think and was really about our commitment to the work Um so in terms of outcomes um we've brought on um uh, UNICEF is we're looking to work with UNICEF in in India um to empower their vaccination programs as i said um the deputy director of USAID said that this film is a model for how we will um end poverty in the next 20 years and um and then the program that you saw map your world I'll just say a little bit more about that because um one of the big things when you talk about um cross platform that whole program was developed um by the filmmakers during the filmmaking process they went to a lab at Bayvac and they worked closely with the subject of their film they partnered with Google and they actually came up with a way to improve public health in the community in which they were working by using data gathering technology and storytelling um so it's been, been incredibly um successful. I think I'm up on time. Well, we can go back cuz I, I there's a couple other films I've worked on, but essentially sort of those bullet points and I can go through it in detail. Um it's for me it seems really simple, but it's really um the strategic process for me is sort of going through that. And and the strategy is around um really articulating within your partners and funders and within the world who are the most powerful and influential players that can affect change on the issue that you're working on how can you get to them what channels can you get to them by and what do you want them to do 
And in terms of value, I think this whole notion of value proposition is that your film is a powerful tool for those organizations to do their work and advance their work. So it has a value for them that, that is not financial and really can improve um, your connections to audience and your ability of your film to make change. So I think that's sort of my big takeaway is for filmmakers to think about your film in a different way. Um, and it's not, it's important that you make your budget. And I also believe that a really effective campaign um, really helps build awareness around your film. And in the long run, we'll probably create a more successful um, distribution model for you on, on sort of VOD and, and um, uh, home, you know, educational. And I can talk more about educational, but yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Jennifer, you're up. Maybe the clicker will behave better for you. Um, do I do this and then it takes me to the... No. It doesn't do that. Ah. All right, so we know that this is called flipping the model, so we'll just skip. All right. So um, Borderline Media is the name of my company. I have, uh, as Lena said earlier, um, I founded it in 2008. Um, and, um, you know, this is the range of, of work that we do. There, um, there are two other people that I work with, um, Brianna Heineman, who handles uh, all the public engagement planning, so the in-person, the event planning, the, the opportunities for people to come together around screenings and, um, and dialogues, and then um, Rusil Mills, who um, does a lot of my web work and helps me think through new media and other kind of transmedia uh, work. Um, and I would say that this is sort of, if you're going to be in the space of being a, an impact producer or a social engagement strategist, no matter where you're coming from, whether you are someone like myself who is not a filmmaker and never produced a film, um, or if you are a filmmaker or, you know, however you come, come to this work, I would say that these are sort of the, um, the core um, aspects of the buckets of what you're going to have to do. Um, uh, coming up with engagement with strategy and fundraising, grant writing um, and fundraising, just know that that is gonna be, right, like a huge part of what you do. Um, stakeholder analysis, right, understanding this is sort of part of the part of strategy, understanding as she was saying, um, you know, who are the people who are gonna be impacted by, um, by this film? Who, who cares about this issue? How can you um, take a look and see w w what state they're in at the time and how the film could be used um, how they can use the film with their work and developing those partnerships, right? So these are sort of like the, the core things. Um, next, I'm pushing this one and yeah, okay. So how did I come to this work? Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't come out of nowhere. I actually, um, that's not supposed to show up like that. Oh well. Um, I come from, um, you know, I've had many different hats. I've worked in media. I've, I've been a um, person who's worked in media institutions, not as a service provider to filmmakers, but, um, you know, I've, I've worked at a number of different organizations or uh, had, uh, you know, provided services to organizations. Um, I produced StoryCorps, worked for NPR on that. Um, uh, my first real big film project was Traces of the Trade, and that was the, the um, season premiere on POV. Shout out to Adnan Wasi in the back, who is a POV genius um, digital engagement hackathon producer. So anybody who's really interested in, in digital and engagement should go talk to Adnan in the back. Um, you know, I've worked at Link TV, all these different organizations, and what compelled me to go and start my own company in 2008 was a sense that um, all of them had really great ideas, but they were all kind of um, focused on uh, uh, old models of how you do business, whether it's working in television or film or radio. Um, they were all very fixated on, on um, you know, a 20th century model uh, for how you you create content and engage audiences around that content, and and as someone who was an avid um, you know user of social media and in the digital space and understood that uh, communities and audiences are ready to talk back and tell you what was important to them, um, I understood that there was an opportunity to engage people in a different kind of way and move away what I was saying earlier from that outreach model that was so paired and pegged to mass media into a model 
of, of engagement. I just want to point out, I didn't work for, although actually I am consulting for ITVS currently, but two um, big projects, Community Cinema, um, which uh, has a screening, screenings of, of their films, of ITVS films that are an independent lens um, in 100 different markets in the country, in, in the US, and Revolutionary Optimists was one of them. So I actually worked on Revolutionary Optimists uh, designing strategy for public broadcasters and how they can use the film. Um, and that's another hidden secret of this world is that oftentimes there are a handful of films that a ton of different social impact producers, whether they're individuals or consultant uh, companies, end up working on at once. Right, and we'll probably bring that up. Um, but we'll go to the next. So, so that's just sort of a little bit of my background. You know, I've been working in media for sort of 17 years and finally started my own business. So what moves me? What, what kind of things do I, do I pick? And why do I pick a project? And what is it that interests me about a campaign? Because I think this is another thing that um, where I have a specific way of thinking about social impact producing or social engagement and where many of us differ. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself specifically, a, you know, I wouldn't consider myself a generalist, right? There are particular oh. topics and ideas that I'm very interested in and I have a background and a knowledge base in and that's why I think I'm effective at my work. So first though, what moves me about a film or project, which is what's important, right? If you don't have certain kind of elements in a film or in a story, it's hard to actually design a campaign. The campaign really has to be an outgrowth of what is in the film, right? In, in a way and how it can touch upon the film and tease out the issues in the film and the way that the, the story helps the audience understand a particular issue. Um, so I, in, in, for me, I enjoy narrative style, um, you know, human-centered stories. Um, they provide context, right? If you have a story that doesn't provide context, it's very difficult for people to understand what you're changing. If they don't know what was before and why it is the way it is now, it's hard to envision what could be, right? That's sort of that old adage, if you don't know where you were, how do you know where you're going, kind of thing. Um, and, and something that complicates our understanding of people, communities, or issues, right? So a very simplified idea about a particular issue that paints a very black and white picture, when you're trying to create a campaign for social change around that, you might actually, um, uh, you know, Coney 2012 is not my idea of about a really, you know, that would not be the thing that I would, that I would use. It's a very one-dimensional kind of, um, depiction of what was going on and I think the response to that and, and what was teed up as you know this is the thing that you can do to change that issue was very simpl simplistic right and actually could have done some harm as opposed to good to and people would, would debate that so that's kind of what I mean um, in a campaign what interests me t dealing with issues of equity and social inclusion community participation digital transmedia and immersive elements and particularly a way to influence or partner with public media, which is in desperate need of, of change. So institutional change is something that's very important to me, how our media organizations respond to the new realities of um, more diverse individuals and groups that are part of our communities. Um, next. So she mentioned this a little bit, and I'm just going to say these are sort of like the big buckets, there's a lot more to what we do, but I would say that this is, these are sort of the main chunks of the process of, of designing a campaign, of, of campaign development. First, you know, goal setting. What is the social change you want to accomplish, right? And also, like, what is the, the, the realistic social change that you want to accomplish, right? Um, your film, I'm going to say this and people are probably going to go, oh, but your film is not going to change the world, okay? But it will if you come up with a really smart strategy working with really smart people and people who care, you can create and affect change on particular aspects of your thorny social issue. But your film itself does not change the world. It's not the movement. The movement are the people on the ground, right? The, art, the organizations the people who are actually already doing this work, your film helps shine a light on that and helps support them, but it's not the thing itself. Um, 
strategy. So now that you understand what kind of change you want to see, what your goal is, what's the strategy for, for achieving that goal? Design, right? How will you implement that strategy? What are you, how will you design an effective campaign to implement the strategy that meets the goal? And I know this probably all sounds like really simple and like, duh, but you'd be surprised how many people don't go through this process. And in fact, I think we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, um, but I think that most of our industry is focused on the execution and doesn't spend enough time on the strategy and the design, right? What's the execution? You implement the design. You're putting into place, you're doing it. You're doing the work. You've done the strategy, you've done the goal setting, you've designed it, now you're doing it. And finally, assessment. Did you meet your goal? Did the strategy that you created to meet the goal make sense? How was the, was the design effective? And how well did you execute, right? Assessment is not just how well did you execute. Assessment is all those other things too. It's also was it a smart goal? Did the strategy make sense? Was the design effective? Okay. Um, I'm totally almost out of time, but let's see. I'm going to just do this piece, and I can show video content later if we need to. And this is, I think this is also important. Um, engagement, not outreach. That's my method, right? What do I mean by this? It involves listening to others. It's two-way or multi-way. It's a process of building trust and authentic relationships. It means working with others to mutually identify solutions. And, and if you do all this correctly, engagement is a, is a method for developing your campaign, developing your partnerships, developing your audience, right? When you engage and you listen and you don't approach the work as if you think you already have the answers, you come up with a really effective method for building a successful campaign, one that will last and be effective. And, and as, as Tricia said earlier, also in, incidentally, will create a really long lasting life for your film, right? Educational sales, hello, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, engagement is a process, it's not an event, to put a finer point on it. It's not a, it's not a screening. Okay, it's a it's a process. Um, I was going to show a clip of Gideon's Army. It's How three long minutes long. Go ahead and show. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and show. Yeah, I'll just slice off my time for you. You sure? Yeah, just absolutely, this. please. All right. So this is a project I've been working on. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. When you work uh, as a public defender. You say to somebody, oh, I'm a public defender, and then they're like, well, what does that mean? I defend people who are charged with committing crimes, and then they'll say, how can you defend those people? I tell them the truth. It's about the sanctity of human liberty and the cost of it if you want to take it. Mr. Cassidy has been found guilty of possession of crack cocaine. This court sentences you to 16 years you guys are doing the most difficult work in the most difficult places. I know one issue is certainly money, but another issue is that it's just too hard. I feel defeated. This is all the money I have in the world right now. We'll start with the, with the non-indicted. It's, it's a boatload of these. I've been screwed around the first time by a public defender. And when they told me I had another one, I figured my life is completely okay. over. I wish I could say that we were going to go in and win this case. I just don't know. And that's the God's honest truth. Oh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. If you're trying to rescue people from hell, you do have to go to hell to do it, right? And if you don't, you won't rescue anyone. I'm scared. I know. Keep your head up. They have the, the gall to say that this is not a big case. There are huge consequences. You want to take my liberty, you got to do it right. And if you don't, acquit. All right. 
I don't see how you can do this work for any period of time and not begin to love it. Either this is your cause or this ain't. So Gideon's Army premiered at Sundance in 2013, and uh, it's going to have a national broadcast on uh, HBO in the U.S. Um, it's a it's a part of the alumni of of Brit Doc folks who I want to give a shout out to all up in the room and my fellow Impact producers. Um, raise your hands. All right, all right. A great great uh, group of people, and I want to just say thank you for Brit Doc for everything. Since I'm in your home turf, thank you. So I'm um, slightly the odd woman out on this panel, I think, because I don't come out of media. I did not work in the media field, and I st kind of still don't, I guess. I just use media. Um, I come out of um, law and uh, human rights activism and global development, and that's where I come from. And then I also sort of discovered design, thinking, and transmedia. And combining those things, I came into the media field. Now, so I am... Um, a strategic planner by trade. So when I think about using media to create social impact, just like these women do, I think about strategy. That's sort of the first thing I think of. Um, and it's, um, oh, it didn't work quite. There is a, something ha happened to my slide, so I apologize. Um, when I put these up on slide share, this will be right. So this is the equation, quote unquote, the equation that I use. It's not a linear process by any means, but it's sort of the way I think about how change happens when you use media or any kind of engagement assets, okay? I'm starting, you, you start with awareness. And historically in, in the media field, as, Patric as Trisha was going through, I almost called you Patricia, as Trisha was going through um, sort of the history of documentary and social issue, we always used to think about raising awareness. Like outreach is about raising awareness. If you would ask anybody, what's your film going to do? It's going to raise awareness of the problem. This isn't enough, right? It's really about trying to get to some kind of change. So you start, you have to start with awareness. And that's where outreach comes in. But then you get to engagement, which is what both, of the, uh, both Trisha and Jennifer have talked about. Now, when I think about engagement, it's the work that we in the media field are doing when we're creating content, we're, we're creating story. So anyway, so in, in the actual slide, those two arrows that go up and down, they go up and down over and above engagement, not over action, okay? So that's a little bit of a difference. Um, so when you're thinking about engagement, the work that I do in my strategy, I'm actually in that little arrow between engagement and action. I'm trying to figure out how you get from engagement using story, working with your audiences, partners, and communities to actual action, right? That will then lead to change. And I'm thinking about community building, right? Using media. So I'm looking at every movement. I work, in, sort of, I work on campaigns, on social issue campaigns, and I'm looking at what you need to build and sustain communities that are dedicated to a particular, particular uh, field of change. Right? You're, you're looking for a cohesive narrative. You're looking for shared goals. You're looking for a common identity. You're looking for collaborative action. And then you're looking for stewardship. You have to steward these platforms. Right? You can't just build it and they will come. They're not going to come. You have to keep asking them to come in. Right? So every movement, campaign, and community needs more than this. But these are sort of the essentials that I'm thinking about through media. This is the way I do my work. Okay, so this is what I use to actually map out um, how I think about my strategy. The first thing I ask, it's at that upper right quadrant. It says it's a change statement. What are we trying to change? That's the first question I ask. It's not what is my story, but what are we trying to change? So this is kind of an activist model, right? So this is, um, and, and I built this particularly for transmedia, but it works for single platform as well. What are we trying to change? And then you go through all of this. It's built on this model. It's a business model canvas. So this is uh, uh, the work of a man named Alex Osterwalder. He wrote a book called Business Model Generation. Amazing book for any kind of sort of campaign, business, company, strategy, anything you want to build. You can use this one page to map it out. So I did this with his permission um, and use it. And I use this with clients and with my own projects. 
And then for transmedia projects in particular, I use something called a user journey map. This is also building your strategy. It is basically looking at how you are using every single piece of content you have, your communities, your distribution channels, and mapping them every single call to action that you're gonna ask of your partners, your audiences, and your communities, and you map it out. So when I think about, the reason I titled this uh, panel Flipping the Models, because I'm thinking about it, a, the way that we do our work right now, right, which is, as Jennifer said, execution first, strategy second. And I'd like to see that change, right? Because I'm looking at how you develop your strategies, just like they've, they've been doing, and it, to, to great effect, right? How you develop your strategies alongside the film development and production. Like, how do you do this? How do you put that first? You not first, but, but, but together. Not after, not after you have a finished product. So you're looking, I'm looking at social impact and your cost action. I'm looking at cross-platform design, and I'm looking at audience engagement, even before the film is done. So I worked on a film uh, project called Innocente. Just, uh, it um, was uh, the Academy Award winner this year for short doc. Um, I had the trailer, but I think it's gonna take too much time out of our Q&A, so I'm gonna skip the trailer, but you might have all seen it. It's a film about um, a child who's, child, a young woman who's about 14 or 15 who um, is homeless, and homeless, child homelessness in the United States is a huge problem right now. Um, one in 50 children is homeless in the United States, which is a shame to us. Um, she's also undocumented, and she's an artist, and she finds um, a nonprofit that sort of fosters her art and creates a sense of security and a sense of place. So this film, it's really, really beautiful. And what we did was we started working on the social impact strategy during production, right? I started talking to them before this film was actually, this film used to be a story about three different people and it became a film about one person. I was working with them even before that. And then we sort of mapped out with, um, the fledgling fund supported my work with them. And what we did is we brought together partners in child homelessness, um, arts education, and um, undocumented immigrants. And we sort of brought them together to the table and we co-designed uh, a strategy with uh, a couple of different meetings. And that's when they sort of, can I just pass through this? Yeah, there we go. Um, and later on, we can, I'll um, give you the, I'll tell you where to find the, the trailer. Um, but sort of, they've now given, we, we built the strategy I guess about six or seven months before the, the film was released. And they're sort of now in that time, when the film released, the strategy dropped. And then since then, since it won the Academy Award, they've been sort of ramping up based on that, on that work. And they have uh, screening and creative workshops that they do with students. Um, and a number of different initiatives that you can look at on their website. Another project I'm working on right now is called Who is Diane Cristal? which um, opened, um, the, uh, released on uh, Sundance 2013. Before that happened, I started working with those filmmakers, with um, Mark Silver, who's one of your alums, the OSA Island uh, alums, um, four years ago, right? So before there was ever even an idea for the film, Who is Diane Cristal? Two years into the process, they made short, four short films called The Invisibles, and I'm gonna show you that trailer. Es gente que tiene una meta muy clara, pero que siento que si nosotros estuviéramos en esa situación, siento que hubiéramos renunciado hace rato. Me contagio de, de, su, de su fuerza y de, y, de, y de sus ganas de seguir adelante. Algunos que van de sus países porque quieren encontrar un mejor futuro, pero en veces en vez de encontrar un mejor futuro, encuentra uno cosas que no espera uno encontrar. Que me dio la impresión de que como un animalito lo hubieran jalado con ese alambre y lo fueron a meter ahí como, como cualquier perro. Lo sacan, lo hacen pedazos y luego en un tambo de 200 litros de diésel lo ponen a calentar y ahí lo meten. Y me dicen, máteme, déjeme que me desangre. Le ponen una cubeta en el hospital y le ponen las dos piernitas que escurrieran ahí. 
Y no, le digo, no, se va a morir, se va a desangrar. Entonces yo vengo y la subo y me dice, deje que me desangre, deje que me muera. So that's not coming soon, obviously. It was a long time ago. But you can actually see those, um, all four films there, um, ranging between five minutes and seven minutes um, on the Amnesty International YouTube uh, channel. So that um, was a precursor. It was part of the transmedia platform for this film, Who is Dainit Cristal? And we mapped out the strategy for the social impact campaign and the transmedia campaign um, a year and a half ago. So the film, well, two years ago now. And the film um, sort of debuted half a year ago at Sundance and is going to be released sometimes in this fall. But we're sort of ready to go. As soon as the film is out, we're ready to sort of roll out the social impact campaign, um, which is looking at immigration reform in our country, which is pretty timely. Um, we lucked out, but it's timely. Um, and uh, the right not to migrate, which is looking at economic sustainability in Central America and um, safe passage through Mexico. The film itself is about one man who was found dead on our side of the border in Arizona, um, who's undocumented and unidentifiable, unidentified, sorry, but is ultimately identifiable. Most migrants are never identified. Uh, so that's what we're sort of mapping out. But we, again, we did this beforehand. Um, so just a little bit more about my strategy. Um, I look at uh, community-centered participation for social impact. I'm looking at a move beyond awareness, as I said. And I'm looking at platforms that are culturally appropriate. I can't tell you how many people ask me, should I build an iPad app? Or, you know, how can I, you know, how can I create this X platform? Instead of really thinking about what is the story and what's the impact that we're trying to get, and then letting the platforms flow from that. We're looking to build an iPad app for a population that doesn't have access to the device. Things like that. And then I'm also looking at, this is a, a model that I built, it's an assessment model that I built um, a long time ago, but then released publicly when Coney 2012 came out because I was a little bit more than a little disturbed by that project. Um, and we're looking at every time we assess um, how we're releasing a media-based, a story-based um, project that is single platform or transmedia that has a social impact element to it, you we're looking at three things, respect, relevance, and resonance, making sure that all the, the, all the work is respectful of a community that's being portrayed, that is relevant to their needs and is resonant with their culture. And then the other two things I'm looking at, and I won't go into this right now because it's a larger question, but, but it does go into how we build our strategies. I'm looking at intentionality. It's sort of like, how are we being proactive about tying our stories and our social impact together? How are we creating rigor around that? And also agility. And the reason I'm saying agility is because I do think that we have to shorten up some of our, our uh, production time and strategy time on documentary. I think that there is an argument to be made that long form storytelling requires a great deal of, of thought and creativity, but in a fast moving world like this, um, social issue documentaries, when we're looking at issues, we have to be a little more, a little faster because we're gonna miss the boat. Um, a friend of mine on Facebook has been documenting the, uh, the Turkish protests. And he, um, he will make a short film and release it, and within hours it's no longer relevant, you know, to a certain extent. As a collection it is, but when he's sort of trying to tell people what's going on. Now that's a very extreme example, but I'd love to see documentary sort of mirror some of that. And I, I think there are a lot of people who disagree with me on that, but I'd love to talk about that. And then let's just talk a little bit about um, financing models. This is how we currently finance, right? We're looking at documentary and social engagement campaigns. And these are the, the people who are financing this stuff. We get corporate sponsorships, audience funding, crowdsource funding, crowdsource production to a certain extent, like you know the Iron Sky um, model. Philanthropic funding, which is probably the biggest in the, in the world of social issue films, they are the biggest players to a certain extent, right? Income revenue models. Lesser, to a lesser extent in social impact, and then venture capital and private equity, which if you're building technology, that's a whole other issue. But the thing is, this is, sorry, this is kind of small, but the thing is that, again, when you're thinking about flipping the model, it feels like we need to flip the model of funding, right? Social action, cross-platform, audience engagement needs funding earlier in the process, not after execution of the product. And the lessons learned that you know, from, from this work that I've done, besides I've worked on these two films over the last couple of years, that strategic planning needs to be done earlier in the process. 
We have to pay attention to experience design. Uh, we have to build strong cross-sector teams. Impact planning and measurement are a specialized skill. You know, it's not a lot, not everybody can do it, and asking filmmakers to do it, I think, is a lot. Um, and then not every social issue documentary actually has to be an activist movie, right? Some of them can be, it's not about raising awareness, but some of them can be about shifting perception and, and sort of working along those lines. Um, so if you want to contact me, you can find me here. Um, I want to get into a little bit more of a discussion about the model, right? The current industry model, if you will. I don't know if we're an industry. Um, or even a field, because uh, it seems that we're a small group of people so far. But in your, in your estimation, um, Jennifer and Trisha, who's doing this work right now? Who does it? Is it, you know, beyond three of us and people in this room, who else is doing this work of social, in, social engagement between documentary and social impact? I think, I mean, I think individual filmmakers are. Okay. I mean, um, so there are amazing filmmakes like um, Paco Dionis and Pam Yates who made Granito and who um, originally made When the Mountain Trembles. Um, so Granito is an extraordinary film about Guatemala and has actually um, truly affected the world in terms of the footage that Pam Yates shot many years ago of the dictator in um, Guatemala. So there's, there's um, lots of people doing, using documentary to create social justice. Um, and films that are journalistic can, can add to, you know, can create social justice by raising awareness about something we didn't know before. Um, I think that um, individual, I mean, I hope that, I don't think everybody's gonna have enough money to hire, you know, a strategist to come on. I guess my hope and the way sort of I thought about this and the other half of my presentation that I didn't show you was just really breaking it down in a process for you. And I think we each have slightly different processes, but I think what's valuable is for filmmakers to understand that process and, um, understand how to link it to their distribution so that um, you can maximize both your distribution and your impact and not impede it. Do you think, do you think this should be a specialized skill? I mean, I know that filmmakers are doing it um, and not every project can hire a strategist, but is, it, is there a, an argument to be made that there should be a strategist assigned to every sort of social impact project? I think so. I mean, I, Trish, this is where Trisha and I disagree, but I think, um, uh, disagreement is healthy, and I still love her, and she still loves me, I think. Um, from my vantage point, I would say yes. I think it is important to have a strategist. I think sometimes filmmakers are too close to their films, right? One. I think that, um, I think that uh, filmmakers aren't necessarily experts in, in the area in which they're trying to create change. They've learned a lot about the particular story that they've covered, the individuals in it, right, the subjects, um, particular, maybe the community that they're covering, but I don't think that that means that they are necessarily experts in the, um, what it would take to actually change a particular, um, you know, to change the circumstances, to create meaningful social change in the, in the, around the larger issue area that they're covering. I think sometimes we make um, choices and we think, oh, if we just do this one thing, if we change this one piece, then that's going to have a really big impact on the overall issue. And I, and I don't think that that's true. I think you do. And, and, and so, but then alternatively, I also think that um, filmmakers can also bring in issue area experts, right? So that's, that, that is sort of the point. You're supposed to also, you know, I'm not an, issue, uh, an expert on every single aspect of, of criminal justice, but the sort of the underlying um, uh, forces that create the disparity in, in, in our criminal justice system, I think I'm very knowledgeable about, right? So I bring in the issue areas that mm -hmm. can help me understand the field better and as part of a brain trust, that was gonna be my next slide, showing you this pictures of all this people that we brought together in a brain trust. Um, but um, yeah, I think we do need specialists. I also think, as you were saying, I don't think every film needs a campaign, right? I think the field could be stronger if we reduced the number of um, the number of campaigns that we were building around films and um, we, we actually got a little more structured and, and, and focused on, on what films we were going to really mm. get behind as a, as a field, as an industry. Trisha, do you have a response for 
Um, Fine. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it would be great if, um, and th that's one of the things that I've been thinking about and why I haven't, um, so in terms of what I've always done, at working for an institution like Sundance or the American Film Institute, my work's always been essentially interacting with filmmakers and, and um, supporting and helping filmmakers get their work made and get it out into the world. Um, and the model for that, again, back to the sort of social justice democratic system model, was that um, other funders, whether it's foundations or the government or individuals, support those institutions institutions and then hire people to help filmmakers. Um, so whereas, so for me now to switch and be someone that gets paid to help filmmakers on an individual basis is a very different model and not probably that comfortable for me because I'm used to more working directly with filmmakers and supporting them um, to get their work done in kind of a, a general, in a, in a more general way. Um, so I think there's two things. I think that we do need more people that do this work because um, for filmmakers, it's very hard to get out of your own out of your own space um, when you've made your film. And I think what an outside strategist can do, or even a group of really smart people, can help you figure out what, what the, fil the film that you've made, what you started out to make, and the film you ultimately made, exists and comes out at a moment in time. And it meets that issue area at a specific moment in time, and you're not actually all that aware of that um, because you're not the expert. So I'll give you a quick example. When we finished, um, I came onto the, the Bully Project, a film called Bully, um, and we, we did an amazing campaign and it, it's um, reached a lot of people. Um, we weren't doing active policy work on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. around bullying legislation. We didn't know that much about it. We partnered with GLSEN, which is the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, one of the biggest um, organizations in the U.S. working in um, elementary and high schools around LGBT and around bullying. Um, we partnered with them. I had a relationship with somebody um, in the White House Office of Public Engagement, and they'd seen the film and they liked it. So we partnered and showed that film at the White House at the moment um, and did a media event at the moment that the White House got behind supporting that piece of legislation. So that was understanding what was happening in a broader way, understanding that GLSEN has been working on this issue for years. And this film that had come out and had had a huge media moment because a bunch because of a lot of things, inclu including the sort of marketing genius of um, Harvey Weinstein, um, that created a kind of moment that we were able to grab onto, and the film um, fueled that. So it is, and I think that in, in that sense, it really having your ear to what's happening in in the issue area makes a big difference. And timing is huge. Yeah, so timing, timing is key. Timing is huge. I, I would say that timing has been so much a part of the success mm -hmm. of a lot of the work that I've, that I've done. And I would also say that, um, you know, two things. One, I wanted to go back and answer the question that you asked, how many people are doing this or mm -hmm. organizations are doing this. If you mean to, to meeting the threshold of what we've, we've yeah. Yeah. You know, worked out, out here, yeah. I don't think there are that many. You know, the people in this room, yeah. working films, active voice to some degree, right? When you're talking about, again, if we're talking about meeting the threshold of what we were just describing, saying, you know, planning, strategy and design, you know, intentionality mm -hmm. in advance of execution, um, it's a small group. I would just add one thing, though. I think that what BritDoc's doing and, and Sundance does mm -hmm. um, in partnership with BritDoc, BritDoc at the Good Pitch is really important because it's a public event that draws in um, nonprofit partners, NGOs, organizations, philanthropists um, into a public event, invites them into the space that social issue documentaries are already working in. And I think what um, institutions are really pivotal in creating mm -hmm. a movement, and what mm -hmm. we're trying to do is create a movement around improved use of documentary to create social change. Right. Um, so so um, organizations um, that put on events like that and inform more people about the potential for documentary storytelling to create change is really important. Are we trying to create a movement or an industry? Well, probably an industry. Right, because a movement, people don't get paid. In an industry, they do. I mean, that's general, right? It's a very general way of putting it. I mean, one of the things that um, we've been talking about to a certain extent is, you know, where the funding comes in, at what point does it come in in terms of timing, and also how are people like, how are people going to make a living doing this, right? Because filmmakers are already stretched thin, and if there has to be a specialist with a line item, where is that money going to come from, and who's paying for it now? 
Um, so in, if I sort of look at who's supported the campaigns that I've done, it's been the Gates Foundation, the Ford Foundation, Open Society Foundations, um, and then like on Bully, there's a lot of really big funders that came in that were working on education and working on em advancing empathy. Um, on I'm doing a film called How to Survive a Plague about HIV AIDS, and um, so we did a really successful campaign with How to Survive a Plague, and we got to the end of the sort of theatrical, and what we had always really wanted to do was embed the film in schools of public health and get it into colleges, um, and we were able to attract funding outside of the media space, which I think is gonna be really important. Um, so the Elton John AIDS Foundation came in with a really big grant for us to be able to give away the film. Um, so this is important if you sort of take note. I think that that's a really important thing that can happen at the end of a campaign. Um, and it's a really key model that for a film that has an educational um, opportunity around it to create a study guide and to create a model where a foundation will actually pay for you to give away the film to nonprofits um, and schools is a really great model. Um, and I've done it on Plague. We certainly we did it on Bully. Um, so it's it's a way for you to actually buy your film from yourself, right? Um, and then at a, usually at a reduced price um, and package it with additional content, either short films or a study guide, and give it away. But what I would say is in terms of when money comes into this space, all the early money is traditional media money. And outside money, whether it's from banks, from new foundations, um, from foundations outside the media space tend not to come in until you've already proven yourself. Right. And then they can come in with you know $100,000, um, but and it's great, and it pushes you further, but very rarely will they come in early on. So how, go ahead. And that, uh, to add to that, I think that creates problems for you as a strategist, right? You, or not problems, but definitely you have to address, adjust, you have to be agile, you have to iterate, you have to really move and zig and zag and figure out, okay, how I'm gonna do this, that, or the other. I would say, one, I wanna, um, I didn't want to uh, come across as potentially dissing the Brit Dog Foundation, because I think they do do incredible work when I said hands, you know, working films, da, da, da. I just assumed they knew I meant them, since I already gave them DAP earlier. But um, I would also say, in the US, and I don't wanna, I don't want to dismiss public media in this space. Public media is, is a big supporter and funder of not m maybe impact, and I think that's more, that has much more of an activist connotation for, for public broadcasting, but definitely for engagement and outreach. And there are people funding that within, within the public media space. So CPB actually does give big chunks of money to people. Um, I, I, I know they funded to the tune of $800,000 for, for an engagement campaign uh, just a couple years ago for a film that was broadcast on, on public broadcasting. I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't wanna out yeah. them or anything, but um, so you yeah. can still find money in, in public broadcasting for engagement, not just production. Is, is that still true in the, in, in the UK? Not so much, right? No, no. I mean, it's been, basically been gutted and like when you think about sort of public media around the world, it's getting, I mean, they just shut down Greece. Greece's public broadcasting, all three channels are gone uh, temporarily, but still. So like, is public broadcasting outside the US or even in the US a reliable source of sort of looking at how we fund and distribute this content and, and, the, and the engagement campaigns as well? I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at a drink. Um, so um, it's no. not the model in Europe no. at all. And can I ask you all a question? Um, for how many of you that are filmmakers, how much, I mean, we've all sort of said the same thing in very different directions. For how many of you was this, was this a new way of looking at distribution? So you're kind of used to thinking about it this way. What's the part of the process that we've talked about that seems most challenging to you that's the sort of stickiest part, whether you don't know where to begin or you don't know where to fund or you don't know how to strategize between distribution and engagement? Hold on, can you pause a second? Oh, we need the mic because we're recording. Oh yeah, no Start problem. Start that again. Sorry. Hello. Um, I think you mentioned it, and it's it's sharing the load as a filmmaker, wanting to, you know, have the film be used as a tool to create change. I think okay, I need someone else to do this. Yeah. And and I think Mona and I were just talking about it, um, outside. 
you know, we, we can only do so much. And, you know, in docs, you're pretty much wearing every single hat. So, you know, I don't know as much as I need to know about LGBT issues when it comes to children, and that's the doc that I made. So there are people like Listen and GSAs around the country in America that have been doing it for years, but I need someone who can do that, can be that liaison, who can create that, and I, I know that, you know, Fledgling Fund was very incredible in, in giving money to, um, what was it, the Invisibles? Is that what you mentioned? They have supported um, both projects, actually. Mm -hmm. But that time period that of going through the grant writing and getting that money, and like you said, you know, I, I can't even tell you how many different grants I've written in my short period of filmmaking. Um, and it, the time-consuming aspect of that is, is very difficult, and you don't want to keep begging people to do things for nothing. But it, it seems like if there can be... I don't know, some type of grant just for a strategist would be amazing. Like, can we Yes, all, it would be. You know, yeah. because we I think, think it would be amazing, too. Because obviously we're all here because we want that to happen, and we want to be involved, but really, like, when it comes down to the dollar and the sense of it and the time period, it needs to happen quick. And that, to me, is the most challenging aspect. You just stole my call to action. I was going to actually end with a call to action from all of us, but that's mine. Mine is sort of an, an R&D fund, right? So, so looking at when you um, have a documentary project that is going to lend itself to an actual impact campaign, an activist campaign, that there is a sort of a research and development fund that is that pays for strategy work and also experience design work. So, you know, so looking at development, being agile with that. Yeah. Um, I have a question for the audience. Yeah. How, I mean, in terms of how much you think it costs to run one of these campaigns, I'm just curious, ballpark figures, what do you think, from what we've described here, how, do, how much do you think this would cost uh, to run a year and a half? And you know that the campaign is, is in some ways just as important uh, but also will consume as much time. You have to make your choice between finishing the film or laying the groundwork for a campaign or an engagement strategy. So there's a number of catch-22s. And also when you try to raise the money, uh, there's such a refined uh, list of groups that would consider funding an engagement strategy mm -hmm. or a campaign. Um, and as crass as it may be to their thinking, they also want to know you know, is it going to be shown on POV? Is it going to be shown on independent lens? Is it going to have a broadcast? What kind of distribution it has? So it's, it's a sort of a double catch-22. And it's not so much the money, per se, because a lot of filmmakers, um, which, by the way, have been engaged in, in, you know, engagement strategies since as long as there's been film and television. It's not something, any, anything new. But, um, you know, it's, it's about the amount of time and resources that'll take. Well, most filmmakers are prepared to put in the time and effort to, to have a, a, an engagement strategy, if, if that's their orientation. It's just the, the conflict with getting the film finished and mm -hmm. balancing mm -hmm. you know, distribution versus uh, uh, the in, engagement, the alternative. There's distribution. no distribution. There's, there shouldn't be a versus. I think I, that I was our well, I, I hate, I, I, I would say they're not in, there's an inter, it's a more subtle dynamic, put it that way. It's not either or by any, by any means, but it, there is, um, there is, we can I ask a question related to that. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Because um, I think it was Lena who actually set out the contradiction, is there a contradiction between distribution and an engagement strategy? Yeah. So I'm not, I'm kind of agreeing with that on, on some level. And my question is, that having been said, to what extent, given the ambition of the films that are being shown, um, you know, the uh, revolutionary optimist, theatrical length, theatrical distribution, how, what experiences have you had successfully uh, fusing the the a theatrical distribution with an engagement strategy? Um, so, uh, I would say for me, it's been um, 
I've worked on three projects in this space directly. Um, so uh, the Bully Project was released by the Weinstein Company, and so we were doing the campaign when we started, when in tandem with them. And what I would say is it ended up being hugely beneficial. Um, we were able to negotiate that the Weinstein Company built the original website. On the other hand, when we created this thing called The Million Kids, where we wanted a million kids to see the movie for free, um, they were like, what are you thinking? Um, so, and God love them, Lee Hirsch, the director, and the work they've done. Now 1.8 million kids have seen that movie for free. Um, and that had to do with negotiating with the distributor to allow us to show the movie for half price in movie theaters. So it was, um, it was a negotiation process um, with IFC films on how to survive a plague. Um, you know, every week, you know, the weekly distribution meetings that the filmmakers had with the distributor as we were rolling into the fall, I was at every single one of those meetings and we worked on, we actually worked hand in glove um, together on that. Um, so it also depends. I think of the three of us, I think I work more in like a space around social issue marketing um, and, and less around social change as social change is a long-term goal. Um, I like the part of, of um, doing marketing of a social issue documentary. For me, it's really fun. Um, but other people are more interested more exclusively in the social justice space, so it depends. Yeah, and, and sort of the, uh, I'll be honest, you know, even though it's being recorded, uh, it's, um, distribution is, is al almost an, often an obstacle in a lot of ways, and I think it's changing. The first film I worked on was Born into Brothels. Um, I was the executive director of the nonprofit, so that was coming even from a different perspective. I had a very, very much an ownership perspective over the social impact, and the distribution and, and our goals were often not anywhere aligned in a lot of ways, even though I needed the screenings. And there was someone at the distribution company, um, David Finkel, he was amazing, who was like, no, no, I understand that, that marketing for the social impact part is gonna increase our audiences. And this, I think at that point, it was like 2003, 10 years ago, was a little bit of a revolutionary thought to a certain extent. And that's largely what people are now starting to have started to see, but I think there still needs to be um, some distrib distributor education around mm -hmm. social impact. Uh, I, Leah, I just, can I add one thing? The, the other thing that I would add is, um, in terms of institutions that are doing this and resources for filmmakers ongoing, um, the Sundance Institute Documentary Film Program is working a lot and now has outreach and engagement um, grants, and the Sundance Artist Services Program um, is really supportive of working in this space. And then finally, just another shout out to, to Robert West in terms of the work of people um, making this available. Working Films regularly um, does um, strategy processes over the phone with filmmakers um, just as a startup, and they used to do that. And um, you know, God willing, they'll continue to, to do that work. So ideally, I think that um, if there were strategists available for kind of short-term consulting, I think that would make a big difference for filmmakers to help them think through their process. I don't think you can have just to say you can you can you can distribute without without having an engagement strategy, but you can't have an engagement strategy without distribution, right? right. So I mean, the, I'm I'm a little bit different from both of them in that I feel like, and 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 being someone who's actually worked in licensing and distribution and for broadcasters, I don't think that they're mutually exclusive, and I think that you can actually figure it out. But it just takes time. And I'm not saying she doesn't think that or she doesn't think that. I'm just saying that I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I should have been clear. I don't mean not distribution, because there are many ways of distributing your content. I meant traditional distributors who take on that role. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. You have a question back there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Today was, uh, I think it's his name's Mark. Hmm? Adam, I'm so sorry. He's not. Um, he was talking about, um, I think quite, quite properly about this idea of an exit strategy. And, uh, and I've been working on uh, actually a project for many years. It's called Green Heroes and there's about 12 half hours now. And there's, it started out though very much as a social engagement strategy piece. And so most of what you're discussing um, was sort of in the budget in the first place, but that's very quickly gets sort of picked off, right? And I think that this idea in the first place that, that the project was in and of itself, and it had the objective of having some kind of a social end, like was, was implicit. So in a sense, it, it, the whole project really, in all its multi-platform components, addressed this idea 
of how a story could inspire social change. So I guess what I'm, my question really is, is it, it relates to this idea of, that Adam had raised about exit strategy and it being a positive thing in the sense of how something can continue so a filmmaker can maybe move on to some other stories. Mm -hmm. But That's the great. other part, I guess, is the, think, the thinking part uh, at that uh, sort of at the beginning, like you're talking about, really where um, you're kind of, in a sense, not really thinking just about a documentary. I mean, that's really the point. I mean, it really is what, how the, media, how the media, media can be used on these different platforms. And of course, one piece that could be very important is the documentary. So how do you kind of start opening up that process of thinking when in fact, when the director of the documentary in a sense becomes just part of a team? Right, and yeah. it really becomes the idea. What you're what you're really describing is is that the team needs to be larger sooner, otherwise the impact that you're actually looking for isn't going to be there. And furthermore, the success of the project, i.e., all these accolades, are probably more likely if the, the strategy and the strategist is on board at the beginning. Right? Yeah. Is that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, I hope I asked a question there. Um, if I hear your question, I mean, my sense is that. Um, directors and filmmakers who are making these kinds of films are very interested in, in making the social impact but are being asked to do too much, right? And so they would love to be part of it, a larger team. I don't think that there's necessarily this sort of auteur mentality when it comes to making these films and these projects saying, I'm gonna take charge of everything. Um, some do, but I think largely if you're in this, you're in this to make a difference. You know who I'm talking about now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, but I think that we have to take the pressure off of, of filmmakers to a certain extent and, and let them do what they do best, which is make the film. You know, make the, that part of the campaign, make that part of the project. And obviously the campaign is gonna be, there's a, a small point, the, the film and the, its social impact campaign relating to a larger campaign is a smaller point. The point that I like to make is, and that both of these women have made is that these are larger social issues that we are supporting with our stories and our engagement. Um, but I think that, I don't think we have to convince directors to become part of a team. I think that they'd like to be part of a team. And, and uh, you know, if anybody else here would like to, yeah, go ahead. Uh, can I just quickly say yeah, that? please. I think the issue is that um, strategy, smart strategy, up front helps you figure out how to breathe life into your film and allows the filmmaker to exit. And that if you create the right kinds of, if you, anal if you do the right stakeholder analysis and you understand who cares about this issue and who can use this film, and you develop the right distribution mechanisms and structures, it becomes, it, sell, it, it, it kind of moves on its own, right, after a certain point in time, that you hand it over to someone else who's really invested Right, and you've built that relationship with them over the, the process of the initial release of your film. Now look at somebody like Byron Hurt and his film Hip Hop Beyond Beats and Rhymes, which came out seven years ago and is still being shown and used and bought via institutional sales through the educational distributor and people are still using it as a, as a tool for dialogue and change. So you know, that is what smart strategy does. If you don't have that up front, and the filmmaker isn't with you on that, you lose out on the opportunity as a filmmaker to sell your film over the long term. I think we have time for one, yeah, I have one last question quickly, sorry. Right there, right here. I'm, I'm meeting filmmakers that they just wanna tell their story. And literally, there is a problem, yes, but I wanna tell the story, but I'm also meeting people that want to do activism. Isn't it time we start a dating site? where you can find the people that are engaged, because I also meet people that want to be engaged in stuff, but they don't know what, or they have, are interested in a certain yeah. topic. I'm meeting academics that are into the area that I'm working with and want to get engaged. So I just found it's a way to create a s site right now where we could actually meet each other, because I think the I think filmmakers should great. continue to make the good stories. You could just do a sector on LinkedIn. Yeah, we should do a LinkedIn or, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but it's really kind of like a thing, because absolutely. there are people that want to do these campaigns and that want to get engaged, but Absolutely. they don't really know, they don't know, I don't know how to make a film, and, uh, yeah, and think everybody thinks right now that should be something they are not. And I think it's really important to take it back to we should be what we are, yeah. instead of looking at all the other stuff and focus our energy onto that instead. Yeah. So should we? Let's do it. Yeah. Adnan, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> well, actually, I should say, on our website, 
Trisha, you're not on it. I'm not sure why, but you should be. Yeah. But Lena and Jennifer, you're on this list. So if you're if you're curious, just Google uh, engagement strategists and then maybe add PBS and POV. So there's a number of people there. But beyond that, we're partnering with POV to basically this is a little side project, but trying to actually organize the field and understand who's doing what and help them develop that list and. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, can I just, just add on yeah. top of that? I mean, if you're interested, talk to these three ladies up there, talk to me, because we're, we're organized, we're trying to organize this, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we will, we will have a dating site for you soon. Um, I think, unfortunately, we're, uh, are we out of time? We're out of time, right? So um, just very quickly, give me one last sort of, uh, I said what my call to action is. What is your call to action, Tricia, to the field? Um, I think that the, the really big funders who aren't in the room, um, and but might be listening, um, I think it's worth investing in um, training and um, free consulting services for documentary filmmakers around creating engagement strategies um, to save filmmakers um, time and impart um, information and more forums like this where people are sharing information. Um, so, so the degree to which we can be um, transparent and the degree to which um, the field can support individual producers um, in their process I think is really important. Great. Jennifer? Uh, my call to action is to other people who are outreach consultants, social impact strategists, impact producers, to join me and Lena and Tricia in um, organizing ourselves. My focus is on us. As the, as, the, as the professionals. I want us to professionalize our services, and as Adnan alluded to, we are actually in the process of trying to build an association of, of strategists, and um, we'll be talking more about that over the, over the coming year. You'll see us again somewhere coming out strong with a name or something. Um, so to, to, to get serious about um, about documenting your work, documenting your process so that you can professionalize because I think that that's how we'll get taken seriously and that's how we'll get funded when we show that we have a process, we, we are professionals and we know what we're doing and um, to, so for us to, to, you know, get better at what we do. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you to Sheffield Doc Best and to all of you. Thanks. Thanks.